Hey YouTube, it's been four years now since we installed solar and during the last four years it's been an up and down on and off with ESCOM and load shedding but I wanted to just give you some feedback on the journey so far and help you maybe save you some money from sharing some experience with you because getting experience from people that have already installed solar you can learn from that and save some money because right now if you had to install solar it's quite expensive because of the demand the high demand the weak ran the high cost of transport and um, transporting these panels all the way from china okay a couple of years ago about four years ago when i installed so uh, my solar panels a uh, solar panel at that time was about two thousand rand and now it's close to 4,000 rand per panel and I've seen videos of thieves stealing solar panels off people's rooftop during the night so if you install solar panels just make sure that you have it protected as well so my journey started off way back in 2015 when I installed a UPS first and that was a 2000 watt UPS with uh, four lead acid batteries and that helped us during load shedding but those lead acid batteries were a problem and after two and a half years they started giving me trouble and i had to replace them and then in 2019 i decided to go solar and evaluating several options at that time in south africa the off-grid inverters were quite popular and specifically the voltronics or expert type inverters and they all white labeled with other names but they they under the hood they are a voltronics inverter and luckily after speaking to friends of mine and asking them certain questions that, like for example if you have um, a nice sunny day today is a quite a cloudy day overcast here in Johannesburg and if you have a perfectly uh, sunny day and your solar panels are generating say for example 5000 watt and your demand from your your household is say 8000 watt then the off-grid inverter is not going to blend that power and that was one of the considerations that influenced me to go with the hybrid grid tied or bi-directional inverter and that's when I evaluated a couple of options and they right now there's choice in the market so you can go from Daya or Dayi, Sunsinks, a couple of other brands but I think the Sunsinks and the Dayas are quite popular now and out of the box those are bi-directional inverters and they offer in different sizes as well 12 kilowatts, 5 kilowatts, 16 kilowatts, 8 kilowatts. But at that time, four years ago in 2019, it was either Victron or Goodware. And anyway, I decided to go with the Goodware. And that was a 4.6 kilowatt inverter. And I started off with one string of panels, which were the panels there at the back. Those full black panels, monocrystallines. And those were, I think I started off with seven. Yes, seven at the time. Seven times 350 watt panels. And those seven panels were producing up to 14 kilowatt hours per day at that time and then in 2020 i upgraded it because the goodware has two mppt so you can add two different uh, strings of panels and we added the seven 435 watt uh, panels so this was in 2020 seven times 435 watt and just a point here when i evaluated panels and the efficiencies and so on I decided that I wanted to pay the little bit extra money and go with monocrystallines because monocrystallines are the oldest technology in um, solar panel development and the polys at that time were being uh, promoted quite a bit but right now I don't see any polys at all so it looks like they completely discontinued what you're getting now is these monocrystalline half cut and these are quite popular right now the nice thing with the monocrystallines is they tend to last longer then the polys and they're more efficient and uh, although the the full black i thought that and people also told me that what if they get um, they they get too heated up in the, in the heat being black and it's going to lose its efficiency but i i frankly i didn't uh, i didn't see any of that i did a couple of comparisons of my uh, output when i just installed them and um, and how they're performing now and they're probably about um, one percent less than what they were before what their output was four years ago so that's pretty good in my opinion i i don't think that's that's bad at all from a uh, longevity perspective okay then after we added this string 
the 435 watt string we were then producing between 27 and 32 kilowatt hours per day we effectively doubled our our generation by adding the second string sorry i didn't mention this i had two times 2.4 kilowatt hour batteries pylon tech so altogether 4.8 kilowatt hour battery capacity so from 2019 june until october 2022 those pylon techs packed up the goodware and the pylon techs they were proved to run with each other but still they packed up so that was disappointing but anyway i replaced it with the lbsa the lithium battery south africa which is a battery that assembled in uh, south africa and since october until now we've done about 500 cycles which i think is is excellent so far and zero issues no issues at all in fact the lbsa is as, as, uh, quite nice because it allows me to go up to about I think the lowest it ever discharged was about 5% depth of discharge, which is not recommended, but that was when I was still trying to interface the CAN interface to the BMS on the battery. So LBSA running from since October until now and no issues. Now, just a point of uh, note here is that the, in, the Goodway inverter was replaced uh, about a year after it was installed and it was replaced with a brand new inverter because there was an issue with the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi kept disconnecting. Let's look at what the inverters produce so far. The first inverter with the one string of panels generated 3 megawatt hours of electricity and the second inverter generated a total of 29 megawatt hours since 2020 when it was installed. So that's about that's about just 31 megawatt hours of electricity since installation over four years we've reduced carbon dioxide and this is from the app that's available on uh, goodway and that's the sense portal app so according to this app we have reduced 25 tons of carbon dioxide we've planted 1669 trees and we've saved from a coal perspective 12,3 tons of coal so i'm pleased to report that four years was the payback period for this installation and now with the weaker ran and the high co higher cost of inverters and panels due to the high demand a payback of six to eight years is not inconceivable so was it worth it absolutely it was definitely worth it from an opportunity cost perspective staff productivity cost work from home productivity it was definitely work worth it having backup power does not interrupt our lives as much as um, if, if we didn't have backup power because electricity now is an essential it's similar to water it, it without electricity we cannot work if we have washing machines we can't do our washing and so on we can't have a nice hot shower heating water becomes a challenge so it's electricity is is definitely an essential today so in conclusion after four years i am very happy that this setup was absolutely worth it and i definitely recommend if you do have the money to go into solar now what are some of the lessons learned if you plan on adding panels try and add panels as much as you can afford all at one because the issue is that with the at the rate at which that the technology is changing if you install 435 watts now a year later you're not going to find the panel and also to match the panel with with it from a different manufacturer it's not recommended right so if you have the money or if you if you're short of some funds rather borrow some money from your friends and family and add as many panels as you can afford upfront right unless you have several mpptes where you can add different panels different spec panels to different mppts then it doesn't make a difference but if you have a constraint on the number of mppts then you are going to have an, an issue if you if you plan to build on your on your panel capacity later on so that's one of the lessons that i learned share some of your lessons as well uh, in your in the comment section below and share your experiences as, as well and thank you for watching and please subscribe for more content